A few days ago, I did a video ranking the SEC starting quarterbacks from 1 through 16, and today we're going to do the same thing for the Big Ten. To be quite honest here, the Big Ten is kind of lacking in a lot of quarterback talent in my eyes, as there's a lot of guys who are either unproven, aren't that great, or don't have that high of a ceiling. It's also really difficult to rank these guys, as pretty much everybody 7 through 18 is not all that far off from each other. We're going to try to do it anyways though, but try to have some mercy on me, as this is very difficult to navigate. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and rank all the starting quarterbacks in the Big Ten, 1 through 18. At number 18, we have MJ Morris slash Billy Edwards Jr. from Maryland. Honestly, I wanted to say that MJ Morris was going to be the starter, but there hasn't been any sort of official word, and apparently Billy Edwards Jr. is also making a run at it. At this point, I really have no idea, but I would put my money on MJ Morris. He's definitely more known than Billy Edwards is, but either way, I think there's going to be a lot of growing pains. Maryland has not been known for having superstars at the quarterback position, and Talia was the best they've had in a long time, but honestly, I think they need to go with MJ. He was a four-star recruit and showed flash while he was at NC State, and then famously last year, got caught in that weird situation where he stopped playing because of his redshirt status and then transferred to Maryland. He has a decent arm and can use his legs, but he's a little bit undersized and is also very unproven. MJ has an opportunity to move up the list. At number 17, we have Dylan Raiola from Nebraska. As a sophomore, Dylan would become national as he passed for 3,300 yards but 32 touchdowns, and then he ended up transferring two more times. He became a five-star recruit and the number one quarterback in the country, but would flip between Ohio State and Georgia before eventually signing with Nebraska. This was a huge get, and honestly, it looks like he could play right away. Heinrich Harburg also could start, but basically Matt Rule has unofficially said that Rail was going to be the starter, and to be honest, they need to roll with him. But I think there's going to be a lot of growing pains. Not only is he not starting for a super high profile school with a lot of weapons, but he's also a true freshman and I think it's going to be difficult for him. Maybe he comes flaming out of the gates and becomes one of the best quarterbacks in the country and proves he was a 5 star, but I don't think that's reality as I think he will start out slow and get better by the end of the year. At number 16 we have Mike Wright for Northwestern. After losing Ben Bryant to graduation. Northwestern's new quarterback is going to be Mike Wright. If you don't remember him, he was a three-star recruit and eventually actually played pretty well at Vanderbilt. He ended up getting off to a hot start in the 2022 season as he had 12 early touchdowns and nearly 1,000 yards, but eventually he would flame out and transfer to Mississippi State, where last year he had 453 yards with three touchdowns and three picks. He's also known as a guy who can scramble, but the third time is hopefully going to be the charm for him as he has now transferred to Northwestern, where he will definitely start immediately and will help run an offense. Is he going to put up 15,000 yards and 1,000 touchdowns? Probably not. But will he do what David Braun wants, have mobility, and play to his strengths? Probably. I don't think he'll move much up the list, but I also don't think he's a bad player either. At number 15, we have Alex Orgy slash Davis Warren for Michigan. I know Michigan fans are going to want to shoot me down in the comment section below, but neither of these guys have much experience, one was a walk-on, one barely has an arm, and there's a lot of unprovenness. Is Alex Orgy super athletic? Yes. Has he shown glimpse? Yes. Was Davis Warren good in the spring game? Yes. But how does that translate to playing for one of the premier college football programs in the country who just came off sending a guy to be a franchise quarterback in the NFL? That I don't really know, but I am a little bit concerned for Michigan's quarterback system. Michigan fans have reassured me that there's no issues here, but until one of these guys steps up and one guy proves himself, I'm going to be a little bit skeptical of the Michigan quarterback room, and that's why I have Alex Orgy and Davis Warren ranked a little bit lower than most people. At number 14, I have Cade McNamara. After originally being a four-star recruiter committed to Notre Dame, McNamara would play for Michigan for three years, where he took over as the starter in 2021. While he did throw for 2,500 yards and 15 touchdowns, everyone knew that J.J. McCarthy would eventually take over, and after a weird quarterback competition at the beginning of 2022, McNamara would sit on the bench and then transfer to Iowa, where he threw for 500 yards and four touchdowns before he got hurt for the year. He'll return for his final year of eligibility in 2024, but so far, he hasn't really proven to me that he should be ranked that high, especially given the fact he'll be playing in Iowa's offense. At number 13, we have Ethan Garbers. 
Garbers was absolutely insane coming out of the state of California, as obviously he's the younger brother to former Cal star quarterback Chase Garbers, but Ethan had one of the most impressive high school careers in California high school football history and was a four-star recruit who originally went to Washington. After not playing, he would transfer to UCLA, where he sat behind DTR in both 2021 and 2022. He was expected to take over in 2023, but ended up losing the job to true freshman Dante Moore. In a limited sample size last year, Garbers would end up throwing for 1,100 yards with 11 touchdowns and 3 picks, and now with Dante Moore off to Oregon, it looks like Garbers will likely be the Week 1 starter, and while he has a lot of potential, I'm still not that high on him, as I've been hearing for years that Ethan Garbers is next up. He either has a big season, or he ends up getting benched in my eyes, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens to Ethan, but honestly I do think he has a chance to move up on this list. At number 13 we have Luke Altmeyer. Coming out of Starkville, Mississippi, Altmeyer became a blue chip recruit and originally signed to play with Ole Miss. He ended up becoming the backup to Matt Corral and would actually get an opportunity to play in their bowl game. He didn't end up doing much for Ole Miss in his two years, as he had three touchdowns and three picks between the 2021 and 2022 seasons, and before this past year, he would transfer to Illinois. He'd take over for Tommy DeVito, and he ended up being the starter as he threw for 1,800 yards with 13 touchdowns and 10 picks, and also ran for three more scores on the ground. Sadly, Altmaier would get hurt, and this would pave the way for John Paddock to have one of the best games in Illinois history, but Altmaier is going to be the guy going into 2023, but Altmaier should be the guy going into 2024, and to me, he just can be an average starting quarterback who probably hands the ball off a lot, maybe wins six or seven games, and is just average. I think he has potential to move up the list, but I wouldn't bank on it. Up next, we get to talk about Curtis Rourke. After coming out of Canada, Curtis Rourke would follow in the Rourke family footsteps as he would follow his brother Nathan to Ohio. Nathan ended up being the best quarterback in Bobcats history, and I think he played a little bit in the NFL. Curtis came in in 2019 and has played the last four years for the Cats. His best season was in 2022 as he threw for 3,200 yards and 25 touchdowns, and then this past year he did fall off a little bit. In total, he has over 5,000 yards and nearly 50 touchdowns to his name, and he'll transfer into an Indiana offense that is looking for leadership and is now under head coach Kurt Signetti. I'm not saying that Curtis Rourke's going to win the Heisman by any means, but I think there's a recipe for him to be pretty good this year, and to me he just looks like one of those old veteran quarterbacks that's going to do really well, and I also like Coach Sig's offense, so we'll just have to wait and see. I think Rourke could also go up the list, but there's also a world in which he gets benched for either Tyler Cherry or Taven Jackson. At number 11, we have Hudson Card. Card is a really interesting one. Coming out of Texas, he was a five-star recruit and was considered the future of the Texas Longhorns football program. After playing a little bit in 2020, he'd be in a big-time quarterback competition with Casey Thompson in 2021, and they would both rotate. In total, Carb would throw for 590 yards and five touchdowns, and then this time he became the backup to Quinn Ewers in 2022, throwing for 900 yards and six touchdowns. Seeing that he did not have much of an opportunity at Texas anymore, he became a fan favorite and decided to transfer to Purdue. He would now join under head coach Ryan Walters, and he wanted to play in Graham Harrell's system. Honestly, it kind of worked, but it also didn't. He threw for 2,300 yards with 15 touchdowns, but he also struggled with accuracy, didn't win many games, and at times had poor decision making. He didn't exactly elevate Purdue, but going into 2023, many believe that he could break out. They have a new offensive coordinator, and he still has all that five-star talent we once saw in high school. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, I think Hudson Card's probably going to be an average quarterback in the Big Ten. At number 9, we have Athlon Kalikiak Manis. He has a very interesting name, as coming out of Antioch, Illinois, he was a four-star recruit and was signed to play at Minnesota. He ended up being considered the next great quarterback behind Tanner Morgan, and after showing glimpses in 2022, he'd take over as the full-time starter in 2023. This past season, he threw for 1,800 yards with 14 touchdowns, but he also had 9 interceptions. In my eyes, he wasn't exactly great, but he also wasn't bad. After Minnesota grabbed Max Brosmer from New Hampshire, Athlon decided to transfer to Rutgers. I guess he was so good and picked up the system so quickly that it caused incumbent starter Gavin Wimsatt to transfer to Kentucky, and it looks like Athlon will take over right away, and I actually do like his potential. I really liked him coming out of high school, and last year he showed plenty of flash, and we'll see if Greg Schiano can get the most out of him. Honestly, I don't know if he's going to go up or down, but he is a guy that many are excited to watch. Up next, we have five players who I think are above average or have elite level potential. The first one is Max Brosmer. 
After being a zero-star recruit from Roswell, Georgia, Max Brosmer would rewrite the record books at New Hampshire. He ended up breaking out in 2022, throwing for 3,000 yards with 27 touchdowns. In 2023, he also threw for 3,400 yards and 29 touchdowns, and alongside Dylan Labe, New Hampshire had one of the best offenses in the FCS, and Brosmer decided to use his one more year of eligibility to go to the Power 5 level. He ended up getting an offer to play for Minnesota, where he will now be PJ Fleck's next quarterback. Only time will be able to tell how good he could be, but Brosmer has a ton of experience, has that it factor to me, and should be above average in the Big Ten. We'll really just have to wait and see, but honestly he reminds me a little bit of a Cam Ward situation where he could come out of nowhere and shock a lot of people. At number 7 we have one of the most hyped up quarterbacks in the portal and that is Aiden Childs. After being the backup to Malachi Nelson, he would transfer to Downey High School in California and Childs would have a meteoric recruiting rise. He decided to stay loyal to Jonathan Smith in Oregon State, and after becoming a top 100 recruit, would actually become the backup to DJ Uyangale as a freshman. While he was only 17 years old, he blew up in the spring game and some thought he could maybe start. That was far-fetched though, but in a small sample size, he looked great last year. He threw for 309 yards and 4 touchdowns, and also ran for 3 more scores on the ground. Charles has an incredible arm, is super athletic, can use his legs, and more importantly looks extremely confident. When Jonathan Smith took the head coaching job at Michigan State, Childs would follow him, and he became the number two quarterback in the transfer portal according to 24-7 Sports. I think Childs has NFL potential, but I think there will be some growing pains in 2024, and I'm not quite sure where to rank him. Number seven feels about right, but he could definitely go up or even down. At number six, we have Tyler Van Dyke. Coming out of the state of Connecticut, Van Dyke became a four-star recruit, and he ended up deciding to commit to Miami. After becoming the backup in 2021, he'd take over towards the end of the year and took over college football. He threw for 3,000 yards with 25 touchdowns and was considered a Heisman contender and a potential top 10 pick going into 2022. Sadly, he'd flame out pretty quickly, getting benched for Jake Garcia, and he'd finish the year with 1,800 yards and 10 touchdowns. 2023, he would sort of redeem himself as he threw for 2,700 yards and 19 scores, but he still struggled with interceptions and he just kind of lost that it factor he once had. He decided to transfer across the country to Wisconsin, where he will now likely be Luke Fickle's quarterback if he can hold off Braden Locke, which I think is going to happen. As we all know, Van Dyke has plenty of potential and NFL scouts really like him, but can he put it all together and how will he fit in the Wisconsin offense? Those are some questions I have, but the ability is definitely there. We'll just see if he actually can go through with it. At number 5, we have one of the most polarizing quarterbacks on the list, and that is Miller Moss. After growing up a UCLA fan, Miller Moss would end up committing to USC after he had an incredible prep high school career. While he came in under Clay Helton, Lincoln Riley was happy to have him and Jackson Dart. At the end of the year in 2021 when USC's season was lost, Dart would end up playing instead of Moss, but that did not make him feel bad. Dart would end up going to Ole Miss, and then once again Moss would be a backup in 2022. In 2023, he'd become the backup to Caleb Williams and actually threw for 681 yards and 7 touchdowns. The bulk of that came in one single game, as in their bowl game, Miller Moss showed the world how much potential he has. In their bowl victory over number 15 Louisville, Moss threw for 372 yards with 6 touchdowns. He showed that not only was he a gunslinger, but he was super confident and could make big plays happen. Miller Moss is now probably going to be the starter instead of Jaden Mayava, and if he can play like he did against Louisville, then he could be a Heisman contender and play his way into the NFL. But that was just one game, so I think ultimately he'll settle into being an above average quarterback in the Big Ten, and someone that'll progress and get better towards the end of the season. At number 4 we have Will Rogers. Coming out of Mississippi, Will was just your average 3 star recruit, and would decide to sign to play with Mike Leach. He ended up getting an opportunity to play a little bit in 2020 after KJ Costello fell off, and then in 2021 he took over as the starter, throwing for 4,739 yards with 36 touchdowns. If Will Rogers could have gone to the NFL, I believe he could have been a first or a second round pick, but he couldn't. Despite throwing for nearly 4,000 yards and 35 touchdowns in 2022, Rodgers was never seen as an NFL quarterback because of the system he played in. Still though, he put up insane numbers, but sadly in 2023 he would fall off, only throwing for 1,600 yards and 12 scores, but he was no longer in Mike Leach's system. 
He'll now transfer across the country to play in Jed Fish's offense at Washington, and he'll take over with big shoes to fill after Michael Penix became a top 10 pick and finished second in the Heisman voting. Rodgers has already proven that he's an elite level talent and has over 10,000 yards to his name, so to not rank him in the top four would be a crime, but I'm not sure if he'll be able to put it all together, as Washington has a lot of question marks. Still though, he has an extremely high ceiling and is someone who I'm looking forward to watching. And number three, we have Will Howard. After coming out of Downington, Pennsylvania, Howard was just a three-star recruit who'd end up going to Kansas State. He ended up playing a little bit in 2020, but never really got a chance to get going, and then in 2021, he would also be a backup. In 2022, he was the backup to Adrian Martinez before he then took over when Martinez got hurt, throwing for 1,600 yards and 15 touchdowns. This past year for K-State, he had a couple of bad games, but for the most part was really good. He threw for 2,600 yards and 24 touchdowns, and also ran for 400 yards and 9 scores on the ground, while leading K-State to a great season. After deciding to go into the portal, it looked like he was going to go to USC, but he's since decided on Ohio State, and I guess by all accounts, he's looked pretty good in the Buckeyes offense. Now he's going to have a ton of weapons, and as a guy who can both use his arms and legs and has a lot of experience, Will Howard is set up for a big year. The one thing I'm worried about though is will the lights be a little bit too bright, as he's going to go from being an above average quarterback at Kansas State to a quarterback who's expected to make the national championship. Ohio State is loaded at every area, and the fans are impatient, and Will Howard is going to have to prove it. Will he be better than McCord? Probably, but I don't know yet. And to me, he's a huge wild card on the list. Some people may disagree with it, but I do have Drew Allar at number two. Coming out of the state of Ohio, Drew Allar went from a four-star recruit to the number one quarterback in the class of 2022. He put up insane stats, and at six foot five, many Penn State fans compared him to Christian Hackenberg. But would he develop into a star quarterback, or would he have a lot of what-ifs like Hackenberg had? Well, as the backup to Clifford in 2022, he threw for 344 yards and had five total touchdowns, and then this past year he took over as a starter, throwing for 2,600 yards and 25 touchdowns with just two picks. While Allar was extremely efficient and took care of the ball, he didn't really play well against Ohio State or Michigan, and that's what he was recruited to do. Honestly, maybe I'm having way too much faith in him, but I think Drew Aller is finally going to take the next step as they brought in that great offensive coordinator from Kansas, and I think he's going to get the most out of Aller, and Aller will not only finish top five in the Heisman voting in my eyes, but I also think he'll be a first round pick and get Penn State over the hump. We'll just have to wait and see though, but for now Aller is at two, but I could easily see him being at number one. Sadly, Dylan Gabriel is the top quarterback in the Big Ten. As many of you guys have known, I'm not the biggest Dylan Gabriel fan in the world, as while I think he's good, I also think he's one of the more overrated quarterbacks in college football. But his stats don't lie. After coming out of Hawaii, he played three years at UCF, where he put up over 7,000 yards and over 50 touchdowns. He then decided to transfer to Oklahoma for the 2022 season and put up big numbers there, and then built upon it last year, having 3,600 yards and 30 scores. Gabriel's a guy who can obviously put up big stats and has a lot of potential, but he has sort of disappeared in big games, and many people think he's pretty overrated. He'll now transfer to Oregon, where he'll take over for Bo Nix, and many believe that he has the weapons and the abilities to both win the Heisman and get Oregon really far. I'm still a little bit skeptical, but for now I do have him as the top quarterback in the Big Ten, but I do likely think he ends up falling to probably three or four by the end of the season. I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback by any means, as he'll likely get into the NFL and probably finish top ten in the Heisman voting, but there's just something that's always been a little bit off about him to me. We'll have to wait and see, and maybe I'll have to eat my words though. So yeah, today we ranked all 18 starting quarterbacks in the Big Ten, and this took forever and was honestly really difficult to do. The top four are all pretty good, but outside of that, there's a lot of what-ifs, a lot of unproven talent, and a lot of guys who really, to be quite honest with you, don't excite me that much. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but what do you guys think? What do you agree and disagree from with on my list? What topics should I cover next? And who's your favorite quarterback for the 2024 college ball season? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.